Did you know that there was a cryptocurrency for kids? Like every other geek on the planet, I have opinions about cryptocurrency. However, I think it's safe to say that most of us believe that adults can do whatever they want with their own money. But what about kids? In this video, I'm going to tell you the ominous story of Pigsby and a cryptocurrency marketed for children. I know we're all tired of hearing about crypto, but I promise that this story has a very unique angle. By the way, I don't own any children myself, and there is very little for me to film as B-roll for this video, so I'll be using some stock footage. But I'll try to spice it up to make it more interesting. Don't worry, you probably won't even notice. Alright, moving on. I first learned about Pigsby in January of 2019 when Hackster gave me the assignment for an article about the Kickstarter campaign, which was running at the time. I cover a lot of Kickstarter campaigns and didn't think that that would be any different, but it wasn't long before I had to tell my editor that my article would be painting in Pigsby in a less than positive light. That's because Primo Toys, the company behind Pigsby, was selling a cryptocurrency for kids. Pigsby itself was a digital piggy bank that was supposed to teach children how to save, earn, and budget in the 21st century and give them financial superpowers. If you have experience with crypto, you know where this was going. Pigsby was a hardware wallet for a new digital token. The difference between this and every other half-baked crypto scheme was that the Kickstarter campaign explicitly said that this was a product intended for kids as young as six years old. To avoid hyperbole in a lawsuit, I will say that this was supposed to happen under parental supervision. Parents would buy the crypto to put in their kids' Pigsby wallets. The children could then manage their newfound crypto wealth while parents kept an eye on things through an app. The stated goal, however, was to teach kids how to handle digital currency. It would be hard to do that if the kids didn't have any control. I've come across other services that seem to cater to parents that want to invest crypto on behalf of their children, including Unest and Early Bird. But Pigsby is the only product I've found that advertised itself as being for kids. So if Primo Toys met their goals, what would those kids put in their Pigsby wallets? They only worked with one cryptocurrency, and that was Wolo. Primo Toys created Wolo specifically for this purpose. It was marketed as a token of strength and the family-friendly token. Like most of the many, many coins and tokens that pop up in the world of cryptocurrency, Wolo wasn't backed by anything tangible in the real world. Primo Toys included 200 Wolo token with every Pigsby device purchase and would sell additional tokens to parents to put in their kids' wallets. If Wolo managed to take off, the people behind Primo Toys stood to make a lot of money. According to CoinMarketCap, there is a total supply of 675 million Wolo tokens in existence, but only a little more than 43 million of those, about 6%, are in circulation. This absolutely is not the case for all cryptocurrencies, but Wolo worked kind of like Stellar Lumens. In fact, it utilized the Stellar blockchain network. A fixed number of tokens were created, meaning someone typed 6700000000 into a box and pressed enter. There was no mining and no system to generate new tokens at all. In a white paper, Pigsby claimed that the tokens would be held by their custodian partners, but I can't find any information on who those partners were or if that actually happened. The word custodian literally only appears a single time in that entire paper, which is supposed to be a detailed technical overview of the token. That same paper includes a chart showing the distribution of tokens. According to that, the public would get 70.3% of the total, and Pigsby, including the founders and partners, will get the other 29.7%. It's important to note that the tokens included with Pigsby devices and the tokens sold to parents would come from the public pool. If Wolo had shot up in value, the tokens, including those that weren't in circulation, would have become very, very valuable. The millions of tokens that Pigsby had in their possession, like the 100 million in the founder's pool, would then be worth a fortune. Even if Wolo only reached a modest value of 25 cents, that founder's pool alone would have been worth a cool $25 million. And I'm sure they were hoping the value would go a lot higher than that. Take a moment to consider how this actually works with a little thought exercise. Let's say that I write Cameron Bucks on 10 scraps of paper. I then convince you to buy two of them for $1 each. I just made $2 and the value of Cameron Bucks is now $1. You tell your friend Steve about this and he wants in on the action. So he buys one of your Cameron Bucks for $4 in the hope that it will continue to grow in value. Now your single remaining Cameron Buck is worth $4 and you just made $4 from your sale. The returns are fantastic. Everyone takes notice and wants in on the action. Demand is high and the value goes up. So you and Steve both sell your Cameron Bucks for $10 each. You turned a tidy profit of $12 and Steve made $6. 
Meanwhile, my remaining Cameron Bucks are now worth a total of $80. You, me, and Steve are very happy with our profits, but those 10 Cameron Bucks in circulation have no inherent value. They're just scraps of paper. The people that bought them have to try to sell them while they still have perceived value. If that perception disappears, so does the value. For this to be a good investment for everyone, the perceived value would have to continue increasing forever. If it remains stable, then it's just a regular old currency, not an investment. If the perceived value diminishes, then the last one holding a Cameron buck loses money. You can probably see why so many people have created their own tokens. There is potentially a lot of money to be made if you can convince the general public that they should buy into your new currency. Aside from logistics and marketing costs, they pulled money out of thin air without risking any of their own money. And how do you achieve that? Well, one method would be to tell parents that doing so is important to their children's well-being. Everybody recognizes teaching children good financial skills is clearly going to be really important. We'll dive into the actual Wello values a bit later, but let's get back to the actual Kickstarter campaign first. Despite warnings from myself and many others that covered the Pigsby launch, the campaign was successfully completed in January 2019 with more than $100,000 raised in funding. It's important to note that the copy on the campaign did not say anything about the risks associated with cryptocurrency in general or Willow specifically. The only thing I can find regarding risk is on the campaign's fact page and it says, quote, we believe that today's children will grow up in a world where digital currencies like Willow are the norm and cash is increasingly rare. We believe that children who aren't introduced to digital currencies early on will be at a disadvantage later. We built Pigsby to help teach kids about this new world so they are well prepared for the future of money. Backers were supposed to receive their Pigsby devices in June of 2019, but this is Kickstarter we're talking about, so you know that didn't happen. In December 2019, the hardware still hadn't shipped, but Primo Toys did release the Pigsby app so that parents could start getting involved in the Willow trade. Finally, in January of 2020, after many delays and the typical broken promises, Primo Toys began shipping Pigsby devices. The only firm number I can find from Primo Toys is that 1,000 units shipped. More may have shipped out later. That number came from an April 2020 Kickstarter update in which the company claimed that all was well despite the new concerns about COVID-19. Because each device came with 200 Willow tokens, we can subtract 200,000 from the approximately 43 million tokens we know ended up in circulation. That leaves, hold on, let me do the math here, approximately 43 million tokens that were presumably purchased by investors and parents. My hunch is that most of the buyers were investors who were willing to roll the dice in the hope that maybe Willow would catch on. Then just six months later, in October of 2020, Primo Toys announced on Kickstarter that they were shutting down Pigsby. There was no word in that post about what Pigsby and Willow owners were supposed to do with their devices or crypto. That post does have a link to a full statement on the Pigsby website, but that website is now just some generic crypto ad crap. But through the power of the Wayback Machine, we can take a look at this statement. It is comically brief and essentially tells Willow owners that they're out of luck and Pigsby owners that their devices are about to become bricks. It puts the blame for Pigsby's failure on COVID-19, even though their last post from six months earlier said they weren't worried about COVID. Maybe this is ironic because Bitcoin was about to hit a big resurgence just after Pigsby closed. But did families actually lose money beyond what they spent on a now useless device? To find out, let's look at the performance of Willow and how its value changed over time as these events were happening. According to Coin Codex, Wolo's first recorded valuation was on November 28th, 2018, when it launched at 1.5 cents USD per Wolo token. If every one of those 43 million Wolo tokens was sold at this price, that would still mean that people collectively spent about 645,000 plus the 107,439 from the Kickstarter backers and whatever was spent on additional Pigsby devices after that. Then the token jumped during and just after the Pigsby Kickstarter campaign, reaching a peak of about nine cents in the beginning of February, 2019. So for a brief moment, Willow had grown to six times its initial value. Then values almost immediately started plummeting by May of 2019, it was back below three cents. A few weeks later, it was back to about six cents. That seems to be the result of some damage control on the part of Pigsby. They posted two Kickstarter updates in mid-May promising that the Pigsby device was coming soon. After that, Willow began a steady decline in value that it never recovered from. 
The only exception was a brief blip in August of 2019 that I can't find an explanation for. The plummeting value didn't, however, stop Pigsby from trying to turn things around. They eventually released two apps, the actual Pigsby hardware, and CEO Filippo Jacob even gave a TEDx talk in Hamburg, Germany. At no point did anyone from the company indicate that disaster was looming. Almost everything that Primo Toys and Pigsby ever posted online has since been scrubbed, but that video is still up on the TEDx Talks YouTube channel if you're interested in watching it. Though it has all the hallmarks of a stereotypical TED Talk, it's clearly marketing for Pigsby. Remember when I said that they needed to convince parents that this was important for their child's future in order to pump up Wolo? Watch the TED Talk through that lens and it should be obvious what they're trying to do. Our kids are growing up in the age of Minecraft, YouTube, Netflix, Snapchat, and the rise of digital currencies, such as those inside games like Fortnite or Roblox, to those that live on blockchain like Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Wallow, means that whether we're comfortable with it or not, or whether we really believe in it or not, money is changing. And when it comes to talking about money with our children today, there's a disconnect. The title of the presentation is Future Proofing the Value of Money, which is pretty funny considering Wallow's valuation. When that video was posted, Wallow was down to less than two cents. As a brief aside, it's worth mentioning how the reputation of TED Talks has fallen through the floor. This is more of a problem with TEDx, but a decade ago, most of us thought it was a platform for the world's most innovative thinkers to get their ideas out. Today, I think the general perception is that it's a place for the world's most prolific con men to swindle the public. The right to protect the health and well-being of every person, of those we love, is a basic human right. I mean, seriously, can you remember the last time you saw a TED Talk that wasn't either a narcissist fluffing their own ego or an Ivy League MBA giving a poorly disguised sales pitch? It seems like the modern incarnation of the self-help seminar. Most presenters seem to be a weird combination of televangelist and Tim Ferriss. And the tool I found, which has proven to be the most reliable safety net for emotional freefall, is actually the same tool that has helped me to make my best business decisions, but it's, that is secondary. And it is stoicism. In this case, Jacob's TED Talk starts with about 14 minutes of forced, nostalgia-driven wholesomeness, like a new ghost kitchen on DoorDash advertising grandma's country home cooking. He follows that with five minutes of unconvincing advice about parenting, and of course, a recurring message that parents need new tools for the modern world. As Jacob said, really important to teach kids how to handle money responsibly. And he had a way to help, which would just happen to also make him very wealthy. In an April 2020 Kickstarter update, Primo Toys proclaimed that they had successfully created WLO Demand. On that day, well, it was worth about a fifth of a penny, less than 15% of its value at launch. But maybe I've gotten ahead of myself here. What was Primo Toys actually selling other than the Willow cryptocurrency itself? The only physical product was the Pigsby wallet, so let's take a closer look at that. Sadly, I wasn't able to find one for sale anywhere, and so I can't get hands-on. We'll have to settle for the limited information available online. Pigsby was a small handheld device with a very cute design. It had two interaction buttons and a minimalist display comprised of 128 white LEDs. An internal speaker and vibration motor provided feedback. The industrial design work was completed by Pentagram, which is a studio with a very impressive portfolio. I don't have anything negative to say about this design. It looks great, and I think Primo Toys had Pentagram to thank for the success of the Kickstarter campaign. They needed that physical device to even run a Kickstarter campaign, and they were probably correct in thinking that it helped to increase customer trust. The standard version was pink, but there was also a green model. As far as I can tell, they were identical other than color. At one point, there was mention of a black VIP version for adults, but I don't think that that ever came to fruition. We can get some details about the hardware inside from the initial white paper published by the Pigsby team. The marketing consistently implied that the physical device was a hardware wallet, but I don't think that that was actually the case. It was built around an Espressif ESP32 D2WD microcontroller, which has both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth adapters built in. There's no mention of any additional cryptographic hardware or software encryption schemes. The ESP32 D2 W2 does have some native encryption capabilities, but I don't think anyone would advise relying on those for something so important. Keep in mind that for a cryptocurrency token like this, 
the keys represent ownership. If someone can get those keys, they can take all of the associated tokens. Maybe someone with more security expertise can give us all additional information in the comments, as it's a bit outside of my wheelhouse. It also isn't clear to me if they actually implemented key storage on Pixby devices. It seems like a glorified controller for use with the app, which handled that and acted as a software wallet. I say this because the white paper explicitly states that the app can be used without a Pigsby device. So it had at least some provision for storing keys. And in fact, the white paper also shows the application layer in the security section. That only refers to the physical Pigsby device as a user interface. Elsewhere in the paper, all mentions of a wallet are related to the app or to Pigsby in general. They even seem to refer to the app by the term Piggy Wallet at times. In the Kickstarter updates, for example, they announced that Piggy Wallets were shipping, referring to the physical hardware device. But then in the white paper and elsewhere, they refer to the app itself as the wallet. The white paper also states that, quote, the physical device is a notifier and game controller that connects with the app and engages children in rich dialogue with Pigsby through sound, haptics, and visuals. While not necessary to the token's utility, it provides a different way for children to navigate the gaming environment and receive notifications of when parents set new learning adventures for them to embark on. It can also act as a cold storage device should the parent and child wish. Maybe it did both? I don't know. It doesn't help that the company, the app, and the physical device are all called Pigsby. I'm not sure if this is intentional or not, but it sure is confusing. I don't think it's unreasonable to think that maybe they were doing this on purpose in order to imply that the device was a hardware wallet necessary for the Pigsby functionality when that wasn't actually the case. If that's true, then security would have been an even bigger concern than it otherwise would have been. I imagine that could have been a real issue if Wolo had ever reached a high enough value to get the attention of ne'er-do-wells. Pigsby claimed that the app was open source and that the code was available on GitHub, but the Pigsby.com GitHub page doesn't currently list any public repositories, so, once again, I'm not able to verify anything. You might be wondering what I meant by glorified controller. To understand that, we'll need to look at the app and the underlying money management philosophy that Primo Toys was shooting for. There were actually two apps as Primo Toys ended up releasing a dedicated Wolo app, but the original and primary one was the Pigsby app. Children learn to manage their money with a Pigsby device and their very own app. The Pigsby Money Tree helps your child visualize their savings goals so they can save for the things they really want. The Pigsby device lets them touch what they've earned. And check their balance so they learn how to budget on and off the screen. Through the app, parents could give their kids Wolo. Maybe that was a birthday gift or a weekly allowance. When that happened, the Pigsby device would notify little Bobby or Sally. That child could then use the app to... I don't know, I guess look at how much Wello was in their account? Sounds pretty boring. It seems like there was some plan to integrate games, but I'm not sure if that ever happened or how it worked if it did. I think that's where the controller aspect was supposed to come in. Otherwise, I can't think of any reason for the existence of the Pigsby device, especially if it wasn't a true hardware crypto wallet. I'm struggling to think of a reason why a child would bother charging and checking the device. But of course, children needed some way to use their Wello. The whole point was to teach money management, right? When your children have reached their savings goal, they can spend their money in the real world with approval from mom and dad, of course. Once they had saved enough and received parental permission, they could use a Wirex Visa card to buy stuff. At least, that was the idea. Once again, it's unclear if that card ever became available. Maybe parents just had to offload some of their kids' wallow on an exchange to get real money? Imagine little Bobby sees on Monday that he has $60 worth of wallow saved and decides he wants to use that to buy a video game. Then by the time dad is able to sell the wallow, it's only worth $30. Poor Bobby. When you look at it this way, it's hard to understand what this was actually supposed to teach kids. It's just a technologically convoluted way for parents to tell their kids how much money they have. It except not real money and instead volatile digital money that constantly changes in value. I think Primo Toys realized that because they released another app. That was a more traditional wallet app for Wolo. As I grew to expect while doing the research for this video, all the information about that app has disappeared. The apps are no longer available on the Apple or Google app stores, so I can't try them myself. From what I can gather, the Wolo wallet app just treated this like any other generic cryptocurrency without all of the Pigsby kid-focused gimmicks. Psst. Hey, kid. 
Do you like PCBs? This is the good stuff straight from this video sponsor, PCBWay. Those do seem pretty cool. Can I make my projects look more professional? You bet they can, kid. This is what all the grown-ups are doing. I'm 35, man. But anyway, I don't think I can afford it. Sure you can, champ. PCBWay prices are very reasonable and you can save even more using the link in the description. First one's on me. Use that link and get $5 off your first order. All right, weird trench coat man. I'll consider your offer. And hopefully the audience will too. And now we can finally talk about the current state of things. Most things related to Pigsby and Willow have been scrubbed from the internet. The Twitter account is no longer publicly visible, and the Pigsby website is now just some standard crypto nonsense unrelated to the original device. Jacob still has a personal Twitter account, but it doesn't have any posts from before 2022. Wallow is, of course, completely worthless now. Anyone who paid real money for Wallow just threw that money away, or at least sold their Wallow to someone else who did. You couldn't even buy Wallow now if you wanted to because it's no longer available on any legitimate exchange. For some reason, the Pigsby YouTube channel still exists and you can see the videos they uploaded years ago. The last one was posted in July of 2020 and demonstrates how to use the friends and family network in the Pixby app. They have a video about what the experts have to say on their channel, which includes a whopping two experts. Neither of them say anything about Pixby itself. All they say is that kids today can benefit from learning financial skills. There is research that shows that young people form their financial habits by the time they're seven years old. And obviously in the digital age, there's an even greater need for them to be financially capable. Everything I can find from unbiased experts is similar to what I expressed in that Hackster article I wrote about the Kickstarter campaign. Those experts expressed quite a bit of skepticism, both about the concept in general and the ethics behind the execution. The Pigsby channel also has a pretty hilarious clip from BBC News where they recorded a visit to the Pigsby office in London, which looks sad. But interestingly, the BBC presenter refers to this as Anna's firm. They're talking about Anna Frankowska, and there is no mention of Filippo Jacob. This morning, a chance to rub shoulders with Poles already doing business in London, like Anna, Alexandra and Jan. They're all in the high-tech game based around Shoreditch. Anna's firm here employing around 20 people. For me, London is the capital city of the world, really. Like, it's not only tech focus, but also it has financial services, ecosystem, arts, culture, fashion. So it's such a diverse place, and it attracts all of the talent worldwide. Pigsby posted that video in September 2019, when Jacob was still with the company, and about the same time he was doing that TEDx talk. At that time, Anna was a consultant for startups, scale-ups, institution, and corporates. Pigsby is listed as one of her clients, among others in the crypto industry, but she wasn't mentioned in the original Pigsby white paper with the rest of the team. My guess is that she was brought in later to try to turn things around. Maybe I'll dig into Anna's work more in the future because her history looks very interesting. She's responsible for a massive amount of money moving around between companies that don't tend to be very transparent, so I'm curious to see what she's done. So in terms of the regulation and where we are at and it's how it's working or helping the sector to move forward, like my view regulation is definitely needed and we've seen what happened in 2017 with too many ICO scams. And as well, I used to work in investment banking and for me sometimes it's quite shocking to see like there's no really a Chinese wall, we call it a confidentiality wall uh, between the projects and the token, right? So. That's interesting, and I think that some aspects need to be definitely answered. In any case, Anna clearly failed to bring Pigsby success. On October 1st, 2020, Pigsby announced on Kickstarter that they were closing. Prior to that, there was no mention on their website or on Kickstarter that anything was amiss. There wasn't anything to tell parents that they should stop spending real money on Wolo tokens that were about to become even more worthless than they already were. According to LinkedIn, Pigsby was acquired by Abu Dhabi Commercial Bank in Q4 2020. Primo Toys was acquired by Moravia Group around the same time. After those acquisitions, Jacob left Pigsby and Primo Toys. He has since become a partner at Playful, an entertainment brand aimed at kids, co-founder and CEO of AstroSafe, a web browser for kids, and the founder and design director of FINH, a product studio that design stuff for kids. Clearly, Jacob has a strong interest in creating products for children, and that's totally fine. Kids need things designed by people who understand them, and it seems like that's what Jacob is passionate about. 
or he knows there's gold in them hills, but I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. However, I'm still suspicious of the motivations behind Pigsby and Wolo. If we ignore all the stuff about kids, then this looks like just another failed crypto startup. The timing matches all the others that tried to make it big during the crypto boom when there was a perception that crypto represented free money. But the kid angle is what makes this story interesting. On its face, the idea of teaching kids money management with digital currency isn't necessarily bad. Cryptocurrency exists in the real world, and hiding it from kids isn't going to help them. However, this was obviously a questionable way to go about it. First, the intent was, and still is, dubious. Was this a simple misguided attempt at financial education, or was it a more nefarious scheme to pump a new cryptocurrency by targeting an audience that didn't know any better? I don't have the answer to that question, but I suspect that the truth is somewhere between those two extremes. It doesn't seem like a stretch to imagine that Jacob thought this was a helpful tool that would also make a lot of money. Either way, the Pigsby device seems to have been rather pointless, the Wolo cryptocurrency was doomed from the start, and it isn't all that clear how any of this was supposed to teach kids anything. But children who did receive their allowances in the form of Wolo were destined to see that money disappear. And I suppose that is a useful lesson about the nature of crypto. From my perspective, the silver lining is that Pigsby is the only example I could find of a cryptocurrency marketed for kids. In an industry famously bereft of ethics and responsibility, that's surprising. If you ever purchased Wolo or a Pigsby device, I'd love to hear about your experience in the comments. For everyone else, what are your thoughts about cryptocurrency for kids? Is there a way to approach this that isn't problematic? It's definitely something for parents to think about. Thanks for watching.